governor who led in times of war, something like a feudal lord. The same Hebrew expression, giver hail, translated valiant mighty man, V1, describes Boaz in Ruth 2 verse 1 and King Jeroboam I in 1 Kings 11 verse 28, CF 1 Samuel 16 verse 18. It presents Kish as a man of wealth and influence. Thus Saul was a member of the ruling class, though from a small clan in a small tribe point five, Saul himself was physically impressive. One David Payne, page one. Two Baxter, 255. Three Tsumira, page 261. For see the series of three articles on Saul by W. Lee Humphreys listed in the bibliography of these notes. Especially helpful is The Tragedy of King Saul, a study of the structure of 1 Samuel 9, 31. 5 Samira, page 263. 74 Dr. Constable's notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. Unusually tall and handsome. At this time, he would have been in his late 20s. CF 13 colon 1. God gave the people just what they wanted. Saul looked like a king. Whereas Hannah had asked for a son directly from God, 128, the Israelites had asked for a king from Samuel, 8 colon 5. Saul's personal traits 9 colon 3 dash 14. Saul is out looking for the asses of his father, and the asses of Israel are looking for a king. 1. The servant who accompanied Saul may have been Ziba, CF 2 Samuel 9 verse 9, though Kish had several servants. V. 3. Saul's concern for his father's peace of mind was commendable. It shows a sensitivity that would have been an asset in a king. V. 5. Kings were supposed to shepherd their people, but Saul cannot do so even for some large animals that will eventually find their own way home. 2. Saul's desire to give Samuel a present for his help was also praiseworthy. V. 7. CF 1 Kings 14 verse 3, 2 Kings 8 verses 8 to 9. Saul had some appreciation for social propriety. His servant, however, comes across as more resourceful than Saul verses 6 to 8, which led Robert Gordon to compare the servant to perceptive Jeeves and Saul to bumbling Bertie Worcester.3 Saul was also humble enough to ask directions from a woman. Verses 11 to 14. Years later, at the end of the story of Saul's reign, the king asked directions from another woman, but she was a forbidden witch. CH 28. Samuel later acknowledged Saul's humility early in Saul's kingship, 1517. The high place, V12, was a hilltop on which the people offered sacrifices and may have been Mizpah, lit. Watchtower, CF 7 colon 9, or a town near Bethlehem point 4. Canaanite type, high places are mentioned frequently in the Old Testament and regularly in a context of divine disapproval. See 1 Kings 12 verse 31, 14 verse 23, 15 verse 14. 22 verse 43, etc. The fact is, 1 McGee, 2 colon 139, 2 Firth, page 122, 3 Gordon, page 113. Jeeves and Worcester are characters in several of P.G. Wodehouse's classic comedy novels, some of which have been made into films. For Wood, Israel's United, page 78, N. 12. 2024, Edition Drive Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 75. Noteworthy, therefore, that during this time when the Ark was away from the tabernacle, such high places were used by the Israelites and clearly with the approval of God. The reason for such divine approval during this particular period was doubtless because there was no official place of worship now that the Ark was not at the tabernacle. CF 1 Kings 3 colon 2, 3. Significantly, the first time that a high place is mentioned after the temple had been erected as an official place of worship again, it is given in a context of disapproval, 1 Kings 11 verse 7, 1. Sadly, the misuse of such high places to worship false gods eventually undermined the worship of God and contributed to the rise of idolatry in Israel. See 1 Kin, 11 colon 7. 12 colon 26 dash 33, 2. Saul's introduction to Samuel 9 colon 15 dash 25. 
Even though God had broken the Philistines' domination at the Battle of Mizpah, 7 colon 10 11, they still threatened Israel occasionally and did so until David finally subdued them. V. 16. After the victory of Mizpah Sik, the Philistines no longer totally controlled Israel and did not again make a full scale invasion. 3. God referred to Saul as a ruler, Heb Nijid, V. 16 meaning a king designate. Notwithstanding, Yahweh was Israel's true king. Also, in verse 17, the Hebrew word translated rule, asar, usually means restrain. Saul would not rule as most kings did, but would restrain the people from departing from God's will as God's vice-regent. This section, verses 15 to 17, proves that the whole business of choosing Saul was by God's will and guided by his providence. 4. Samuel gave preference to Saul by inviting him to go up before him to the high place. V. 19. Samuel promised Saul that not only his lost donkeys, one Edom, distressing days, page 375, to the Nelson, page 465, 3G, Coleman Luck, the first meeting of Saul and Samuel, Bibliotheca Sacra 124 495, July September 1967 259, for Sumira, page 273. 76 Dr. Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. But all that was desirable in Israel would soon come into his possession. V. 20. Saul's humble response to Samuel, in view of his father's being a valiant, mighty man. V. 1 was admirable. V. 21. CF Exodus 3 verse 11. 4 verse 10. Jeremiah 1 verse 6. On the one side Saul was a man hunting for donkeys who instead found a kingdom, and on the other side there was Samuel, who was looking for a suitable king and found a young man of remarkable political unawareness. 1. Saul's unawareness is evident in that he did not know who Samuel was, even though Samuel was Israel's leading judge and prophet. Evidently, a dining hall stood near the high place, B. 22. It may have been a room in a larger religious building. Point two, giving the special leg of meat to Saul, was a sign of special honor. Verses 23 to 24. S. R. Driver believed that this was the fat tail of a certain kind of sheep that was a delicacy. Point three, before retiring for the night, Samuel and Saul continued their conversation on the typically flat roof of the house, probably for privacy as well as comfort. V. 25. CF Acts 10 verse 9. Saul's private anointing by Samuel 9 26, 10 colon 8. Anointing with oil was a symbolic act in Israel that pictured consecration to service. The only things anointed with oil before this anointing were the priests and the tabernacle. The oil symbolized God's spirit, and anointing with oil represented endowment with that spirit for enablement. CF 1 John 2, 27. In the ancient Near East, a representative of a nation's God customarily anointed the king, whom the people viewed from then on as the representative of that God on earth. Point four thus Saul would have understood that Samuel was setting him apart as God's vice regent and endowing him with God's power to serve effectively. Beginning with Saul, Kings were similar to priests in Israel as far as representing God and experiencing divine enablement. Samuel's kiss, V1, was a sign of affection and respect, since now Saul was God's special representative on the earth. Samuel reminded Saul that the 1 David Payne, page 45, 2 Youngblood, pages 622 to 23, 3 Driver, page 76. For Roland de Vox, The Bible and the Ancient Near East, pages 152 to 66. 2024, Edition Drive Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 77. Israelites were the Lord's inheritance, another comment that Saul unfortunately did not take to heart. CF 913. Samuel then gave Saul three signs that would verify to the king elect that Samuel had anointed him in harmony with God's will. The first of these would have strengthened Saul's confidence in God's ability to control the people under his authority, B2. The second would have helped Saul realize that the people would accept him and make sacrifices for him, verses 3 to 4. 
The third would have assured him that he did indeed possess supernatural enablement from God. Verses 5 to 6. Warren Wearsby believed that Saul should have learned the following lessons from these three signs. One, God could solve his problems. Two, God could also supply his needs. Three, God could endow him with the power he needed for service point one. The hill of God lit. Jibiath Halohim, V, 5, was probably Gibeah, Hill, CFV, 26, 11, colon, 4, point 2. It appears from this verse that a large area of central Palestine was now in the hands of the Philistines, 3. The reference to Rachel's tomb being in Benjamin's territory, V2, may seem to conflict with the statement that Rachel was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem, Genesis 35, verse 19, which was in the territory of Judah. Evidently, she was buried somewhere near Ramah, in the territory of Benjamin, CF Jeremiah 31, verse 15. The original location of Rachel's tomb was near Ramah on the Bethlehem Road. The present-day Rachel's tomb is based on a later tradition, 4. 1 Wearsby, page 229. 2C Aaron Dembski, Geba, Gibia, and Gibeon, an historico-geographic riddle, Bulletin of the American School of Oriental Research 212, December 1973-27. Three Driver, page 80. For Sumira, page 284. On the subject of the location of Rachel's tomb, CF Genesis 35, verse 19, Ja. 31 colon 15, see Madashahut Sevat. Studies in the Book of Samuel, Hebrew Union College, Annual 33, 1962-107-18. 78 Dr. Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. Some Bible students have concluded that Saul was not a believer in Yahweh.1 would any godly Israelite have been unaware of Samuel, who had ministered in the tabernacle and in the towns of Benjamin for years. If Kish, Saul's father, had taken his family to worship at the tabernacle yearly, as Elkanah did with his family, would he not have at least known of Samuel's reputation, if not known him personally? But since God chose and equipped Saul to rule his people, others believe that he was a genuine believer in Yahweh, though Saul gave evidence of. 1.8G John Calvin, Institutes of the Christian Religion, 3.2.12, Alexander White, Bible Characters, 1 colon 229-31, McGee, 2 colon 141, 150 to 51, Wearsby, pages 260, 293 to 94, Gibeah, Gibeon Geba Gilgal, Bezik Jabesh Gilead, towns mentioned in 1 Samuel 10 to 11, 2024, Edition Drive Constable's notes on 1 Samuel 79, not having a strong commitment to him. Yet God chose Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus, both unbelievers, at least at first, to rule his people. It seems to me that the writer describes Saul as a spiritually insensitive person. Whether he genuinely knew the Lord or not is very difficult to say, in view of what the writer of the book wrote. Saul was a secular person, not a spiritual person. One, here, the Spirit of the Lord functions as the means by which he takes ordinary people and makes them fit for his service. 2. Samuel gave Saul his first orders as God's vice-regent. V8. Unfortunately, he disobeyed them. 13 8-14. Perhaps the tabernacle now stood at Gilgal since Samuel planned to offer burnt and peace offerings there. However, Samuel may have sacrificed at places other than the tabernacle. 717. CF. 1435, again, we can see that the tabernacle was not one of the writer's main concerns. God's enablement of Saul 10 colon 9 dash 16. We should probably not interpret the reference to God changing Saul's heart, V 9, to mean that at this time Saul experienced personal salvation. This always takes place when a person believes a promise from God, and there is no indication in the context that Saul did that at this time. Probably it means that God gave him a different viewpoint on things, since he had received the Holy Spirit. Some interpreters have taken this as Saul's conversion point three in Hebrew psychology, 
The heart was the seat of the intellect, emotions, and will. Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown explained Saul's change of heart as follows. Influenced by the words of Samuel, as well as by the accomplishment of these signs, Saul's reluctance to undertake the onerous office was overcome. Four. One Wearsby, page 230. Two Sumira, page 288. Three Eid G, Zane C, Hodges, The Salvation of Saul, Grace Evangelical Society News 9 4, July August 1994 1. Three. For Robert Jameson, A. R. Fawcett and David Brown, Commentary Practical and Explanatory on the Whole Bible, page 212. 80 Dr. Constable's notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. God's Spirit also gave Saul the ability to prophesy, B10. This was the outward evidence that God was with Saul. It apparently involved the Holy Spirit controlling these men, and they're manifesting his control by praising God. CF 19 colon 20-24, 1 Chronicles 25 verses 1 to 3. The evidence of this new gift surprised people who knew Saul, and they took note of it, v. 11. Some students of this passage have concluded that Saul demonstrated this gift with ecstatic behavior, point one others have not, point two, I see no evidence of it in the text. This is the first of several references to groups of prophets in the historical books, CF 1920, 2 Kings 2 verses 1 to 7, 15 to 18, 4 colon 38 dash 41, 6 colon 1 dash 2, Though the term school of the prophets does not appear in the Old Testament, the texts noted identify groups of prophets who gathered together, sometimes under the leadership of a prominent prophet, e.g. Samuel, Elijah, or Elisha, apparently to learn how to present messages from the Lord and lead the people in worship. Some of them even had buildings in which they met, including ones at Gilgal, Bethel, and Jericho, 2 Kings 2 verses 1 to 5 for verses 38 to 41, 6 colon 1, 2. Samuel evidently had such a school or group of disciples, and this group apparently also met in their own buildings. CF 1 Samuel 19 verses 18 to 20, point 3. The question, who is their father? V 12 inquired about the source of the behavior of all the prophets, including Saul. Their conduct was indeed an evidence of God's presence and working in their lives point for the proverb that evolved from this incident, CF 1924, was derogatory. Some of the people felt that the behavior of prophets was inappropriate, especially for their king, CF 2 Samuel 6 verses 13 to 16. Ironically, their question did not express doubt that Saul was a prophet, but confidence that God had empowered him. Another view is that the question expressed a negative opinion such as, Saul is no prophet, 5. The high place referred to in verse 13 is probably the same one mentioned earlier, verses 5, 10, namely, Geba. Geba was only four miles from Saul's. 1E.G, e. Bright, page 166. 2E.G, e. Leon J, Wood, Ecstasy and Israel's Early Prophets, Bulletin of the Evangelical Theological Society 9, Summer 1966-125-37. See also IDEM, The Prophets, pages 40, 56, 91 to 92. Three for further discussion, see a bit, pages 164 to 66. For Kiel and Delitzsk, pages 104 to 5. 5 C. John Sturdy, the original meaning of, is Saul also among the prophets? 1 Samuel X 11, 12, 1924, Vetus Testamentum 20,2, April 1972 10. 2024, Edition Drive Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 81. Hometown, Gibeah, Lit. Hill, Saul's uncle may have been Na, the father of Abner, 14,50 51, or some other uncle.1. These passages in 1 Samuel indicate that the writer of Samuel had no problem with high places so long as they were dedicated to Yahweh. In Kings, however, the attitude of the historian is clearly hostile to high places. 
He conceded the necessity of the people worshipping there, and by inference Solomon also, because of the lack of a temple. However, the historian was writing from a later perspective when religion had become syncretistic and the high places were a snare to the people, too. This section closes with another reference to Saul's humility. V. 16. CF Phil 2 colon 8. James 4 verse 10. 1 Peter 5 verse 6. 3. The choice of Saul by Lot 10 colon 17 27. Saul's rise to kingship over Israel took place in three distinct stages. He was 1. Anointed by Samuel, 9 colon 1, 1016. 2. Chosen by Lot, 10 colon 17 27. And 3. Confirmed by public acclamation, 11 colon 1 15. Point 3. Saul's anointing had been private, but his choice by Lot was public. Mizpah was the scene of Israel's previous spiritual revival and victory over the Philistines, 7 colon 5 13. Perhaps Samuel chose the site for Saul's public presentation because of those events. As I have noted previously, the tabernacle may have been there as well. Samuel took the opportunity to remind Israel that Yahweh was Israel's real deliverer, so the people would not put too much confidence in their new king. V. 18. CF Exodus 20 verse 2. Deuteronomy. 5 colon 6. Judges 6 verses 8 to 9. He also reminded them of their rebellion against God's will when they insisted on having a king, v. 19.4. 1 C.D.R. A.P. Thomas, Saul's uncle, Vetus Testamentum 11, 1961 45 Sumira, page 385. 2 Heater, page 126. Paragraph division omitted. 3 Youngblood, page 623. For C. Bruce C. Birch, The Choosing of Saul at Mizpah, Catholic Biblical Quarterly 37 4, 1975 447 54. 82 Dr. Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. Even though Israel's attitude toward God is blameworthy, when he accepts their request, he will give them the best. 1. The Lot v. 20 showed all Israel that Saul was God's choice not Samuel's, C.F. Josh, 7 colon 14 18. That is, he was the king whom God permitted, P.R.O.V. 1633. Was he hiding out of modesty or fear? Probably the latter, because true humility accepts God's will while at the same time depending on God's strength and wisdom, too. Some interpreters have concluded that Saul was hypocritically demonstrating false modesty. Point three, my judgment is that he was humble, since there are other indications of this quality in chapters 9 and 10, CF PROV, 25 6-7. There seems to have been a modesty that was combined with a shy temperament. For if Saul had been an ambitious person, he would have been at the center of activity. And even if he had been only an average person, he would at least have been available on the fringes of the crowd. Saul, however, had hidden himself so that he would not be found. 5. However, Saul may also have been wisely reluctant to assume the role and responsibilities of Israel's king. The Lord had chosen Saul, v. 24, because he wanted him to be his vice-regent. Saul had the potential of becoming a great king of Israel. Consequently, Samuel commended him, and most of the people supported him. Verses 24, 27. They cried, Long live the king. It, this cry, represents now, as it did then, the enthusiastic hopes of the citizenry that their monarch may remain hale and hearty in order to bring their fondest dreams to fruition. 6. 1 Samira, page 297. 2 Wearsby, page 231. See also Gabeline, 1 2 153. 3 Ed G. Morgan, The Unfolding page 126. For Baldwin, page 90. Five Wood, Israel's United, page 81. Six Youngblood, page 631. 2024, Edition Drive Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 83. The ordinances, V. 25, that Samuel related to the people and wrote in a document that he placed before the Lord, i.e., 
in the tabernacle were probably the directions involving monarchical rule. In Deuteronomy 17, 14, 20 at least, the ancient Tel, archaeological mound of Gibeah v. 26, now stands three miles north of the old city of Jerusalem, the buildings of which are clearly visible from Gibeah. It is now a northern suburb of Jerusalem. God further blessed Saul by inclining the hearts of valiant men in Israel to support him. There were some, however, who did not support him. They were evidently looking on Saul's natural abilities as essential to Israel's success and were forgetting that Yahweh was the real source of her hope. V. 27. CF Judges 6 verses 15 to 16. Thus differently are men affected to our exalted Redeemer. God hath set him king upon the holy hill of Shaun. There is a remnant whose hearts God has touched, whom he has made willing in the day of his power. But there are others who despise him, who ask, how shall this man save us? 1. Saul was a wise enough man not to demand acceptance by every individual in Israel. CF Proverbs 14 verse 29, Romans 12 verse 19, James 1 verses 19 to 20. The reason he failed later was not because he lacked wisdom. Throughout these verses, Saul behaved in an exemplary fashion. However, notice that the writer made no reference to his regard for God or God's word. By every outward appearance, Saul was very capable of serving as Israel's king. This is what the people wanted, a man similar to themselves to lead them, and that is exactly what God gave them. It remains very clear that God did not choose this king for himself, but rather for the people. In other words, Though God actually appointed Saul, Saul did not in the final analysis represent God's choice, but the people's choice, too. Yet God gave the Israelites a man with great personal strengths, wisdom, humility, sensitivity, physical attractiveness, and wealth. His gift of Saul was a good gift, as are all God's gifts to his people, Luke 11 verses 9 to 13. God did not give Israel a time bomb just waiting to explode. Saul failed because 1 Henry, page 296 2 G, Coleman Luck, the first glimpse of the first king of Israel, Bibliotheca Sacra 123 colon 489, January March 1966-51. 84 Dr. Constable's notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. Of the choices he made, not because he lacked the qualities necessary to succeed. Four. Saul's effective leadership in battle 11 colon 1 11. Israel's king not only needed to be an admirable individual in his personal conduct, but he also needed to be an effective military commander. The writer pointed out Saul's abilities in this area in this chapter. The nation united behind him because of his military success. This was the third divine indication that God had chosen Saul to lead Israel, following his private anointing and his public choice by lot. The Ammonite Siege of Jabesh Gilead 11 colon 1 5. The Ammonites were Israel's enemies to the east. They were descendants of Lot, whom Jephthah had defeated earlier. Judges 11 verses 12 to 33. Naash lit. Serpent evidently sought revenge for Jephthah's victory over his nation. Jabesh Gilead lay a few miles east of the Jordan Valley and about 25 miles south of the Sea of Chinnereth, Galilee. Chinnereth is the Hebrew word for lyre. A musical instrument. The lake has the shape of a lyre, which accounts for this name. The men of Jabesh Gilead offered to surrender and serve the Ammonites provided Nosh would make a covenant with them rather than slaughtering them. Nahash's purpose to put out the right eye of his enemies was not uncommon in that day. This wound made a conquered nation easier to control, and it testified to the conqueror's superior power. Specifically, it made aiming arrows with the right eye impossible, and it made looking from behind one's shield, which covered the left eye, impossible point when this injury therefore precluded a military revolt. Perhaps Nahash's decision to attack Jabesh Gilead was the result of the Israelites breaking a treaty with his nation. In the ancient Near East, the physical mutilation, dismemberment, or death of an animal or human victim could be expected as the inevitable penalty for treaty violation. 2. 1 Josephus, 6 colon 5 colon 1. 2 Youngblood, page 637. 2024 
Edition Drive Constable's notes on 1 Samuel 85. It's interesting that nobody from Jabesh Gilead responded to the call to arms when the nation had to punish the wickedness of Gilead and Benjamin, Judges 21 verses 8 to 9, but now they were asking their fellow Jews to come and rescue them. 1. Nahash's willingness to let his enemies appeal for help shows that he had no fear that adequate reinforcements would come. He was sure of his superiority and may even have viewed the delay as an opportunity to ensure victory. At this time, Israel lacked a central government, national solidarity, and a standing army. However, Saul was now Israel's king. The announcement of the messengers from Jabesh Gilead led the people in Saul's hometown, as well as elsewhere undoubtedly, to weep. They had again forgotten God's promises to protect them since they were his people. Their reaction was a result of viewing the situation from the human perspective only. Contrast the perspective of Caleb and Joshua earlier, which took God into consideration. Why was Saul at home farming, since now he was Israel's king? He had not yet received direction from God or Samuel to do anything else as far as we know. The fact that he, the anointed king, was plowing also shows his humility. Estate owners never worked the land themselves point to furthermore. He was willing to work hard. Thus he was not self-centered at this time, CF. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. Saul's deliverance of Jabesh Gilead 11 colon 6 dash 11. God's spirit rushed on Saul in the sense that he stirred up his human spirit. CF 10 colon 6, 10. Saul's response to the messenger's news was appropriate indignation since non-Israelites were attacking God's covenant people, Genesis 12 verse 3. Saul may have had a personal interest in Jabesh Gilead since some of his ancestors evidently came from there. CF 31:11-13. Following the civil war in Israel, during which many Benjamites had died, many of those who remained alive took wives from the women of Jabesh Gilead and the women of Shiloh. Judges 21. Saul did something drastic to impress the gravity of the Ammonite siege on his fellow Israelites. He followed the example of the Levite whose concubine had died in Saul's hometown, Judges 19 verses 29 to 30. Later another. One Wearsby, page 232. Two Marvin Cheney, Systemic Study of the Israelite Monarchy, Samia 37, 1986-61. 86 Dr. Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 2024 edition. Haman Elisha, would slaughter a pair of oxen and host a meal for his friends as he began his ministry as a prophet, 1 Kings 19, verse 21. Saul's slaughter and dissection of his oxen is reminiscent of the Levite's treatment of his murdered concubine and clearly is designed to connect the commencement of his reign with the historical event which accounts for his Jabesh Gilead maternal roots. 1. Saul linked himself with Samuel because Samuel was the recognized spiritual leader of the nation. The Israelites probably dreaded both Saul's threatened reprisals for not responding to his summons and the Ammonite threat. In Saul's energetic appeal, the people discerned the power of Jehovah, which inspired them with fear and impelled them to immediate obedience. Two. The response of the Israelites constituted the greatest show of military strength since Joshua's day, assuming the Hebrew word Aleph means thousand here. Bezek stood about 16 miles west of Jabesh Gilead on the River Jordan's western side. CF Judges 1 verses 4 to 5. The division of the soldiers into Israelites and Judites probably reflects the division of the nation that existed when the writer wrote this book. There is no other evidence that such a division existed when the event recorded here happened. The messengers returned to Jabesh Gilead with the promise that their town would be free by noon the next day. The leaders of Jabesh Gilead played with words as they cleverly led the Ammonites into self-confidence, thinking that they would win. The Ammonites had threatened to put out the right eyes of the men of Jabesh Gilead, V2. The Jabesh Gileadites now told the Ammonites to do whatever seemed good literally in their eyes v. 10 CF 1436. Saul wisely divided his troops into three companies and attacked the besieging Ammonites early in the morning, just like Gideon had done. CF. Judges 7 verses 16 and 19. The morning watch was the last of three night watches. 1 Eugene H. Merrill, The Book of Ruth. 
Narration and Shared Themes, Bibliotheca Sacra 142 to 566, April June 1985 140, N. 13, Tukil and Dolitsk, page 112. 2024, Edition Drive Constable's Notes on 1 Samuel 87. And it lasted from about 2 to 6 a.m. These three watches had their origin in Mesopotamia, but all the Western Asian nations observed them before the Christian era. C.F. Lamb, 219. The only other place in the Old Testament where this phrase at the morning watch V11 occurs in Hebrew is Exodus 14, verse 24. At that earlier time, God slew the Egyptian soldiers as they pursued the fleeing Israelites through the Red